Hello everyone, myself Ritesh. I have five years of experience into data engineering and data analytics field. My key skills or key expertise are uh, Power BI for reporting purpose, uh, the database that is SQL. And uh, I have also have expertise into Azure Cloud, which includes uh, ETL that is Azure Data Factory, ADLS, Logic Apps and Databricks. I've been working for multiple MNCs since last five years. I've worked for retail, I've worked for automobile, and I've also worked for cloud and technological domains. So we kind of, uh, in the last session, we kind of seen uh, what exactly the BI is. Um, we have taken few uh, picture examples, few graphical representations, and how the importance of graphical representation uh, or how the importance of pictures, of the importance of graphs and KPIs would be having more on individual rather than any text, normal text format. And if you combine everything in one entity or if you combine all other aspects, that is nothing but a business intelligence. We kind of taken few uh, insights also what exactly data warehousing is. What is data discovery and visualization? What is data integration? What is data governance? Now, now, now let's take one more real-time example. So let's assume I'm taking an example of uh, the KSR Institute itself. So we kind of get multiple requests. We kind of get multiple kind of inquiries from multiple sources. Maybe YouTube, uh, maybe LinkedIn, maybe any WhatsApp groups maybe any Facebook or social media groups, um, kind of Instagram, Facebook, or any Twitter related groups. So we get many requests from number of entities together. So if you combine that entities, we have to store that request. We have to store that request. <clears throat> so somewhere we are storing that request. Somewhere we are storing that request. So that store is called as a data warehouse. That store is called as a data warehouse. So how to get that data to data warehouse? We use this process called as data integration. So we are kind of getting multiple requests from multiple aspects or different environments. So in order to get that data, integrate that data, we use this process called as data integration. And we store that information in data warehouse. So in data warehouse, we may store it in uh, multiple uh, subfolders or multiple sub, <clears throat> uh, you could say sub entities also. Um, kind of, uh, we get requests from social media, we store it in different sub entity. We get requests from YouTube, we store it in different entity. We get requests from any WhatsApp group, we, we store it in different entity. So this is how you combine all data in data warehouse. So that different entities are called as data marts. Data mart is the data which is present or which is belongs to or the data which belongs to one single entity. So multiple data marts combined together to form a complete data warehouse. In order to get that data, we use this process called as data integration, which is nothing but ETL extract, transform, and load. Now, once that is done, we may get data in multiple formats. We may get data in multiple formats. It may be uh, a kind of data anomaly. We have multiple data an anomalies. We have seen this example. Uh, if I go back, we kind of seen this example. Yeah, so we kind of seen this example. Uh, we may get data in multiple sub formats it may be not correct every time, maybe not correct every time. So we have to focus on the importance of data. We have to filter out the data. So how does how to filter out or how do we filter out? We kind of use this master data or data quality management. We kind of improve the data quality. We have to sort out which data is correct. If the data is not correct, we have to sort out it. We have to make changes. So this helps to master the data or kind of call manage the quality of the data so this is done with the help of master data management now we kind of seen data integration we kind of seen data warehousing once this is done uh, we kind of use this quality data we kind of 
uh, get this data to our reports for reporting purpose, for analyzing purpose. So that is nothing but data discovery and visualization. For reporting purpose, we use this concept. <clears throat> now, once the reporting is done, at the end, we are sharing it or at the end, we kind of analyze that data. So which data should be available to which user? Uh, how, uh, I mean, if, a, if we have data from multiple aspects and if the user is looking out for only one single entity of data, maybe he's looking out for data which is coming from WhatsApp or he doesn't want to see all other uh, sources from which, from where the data is coming, from where are KSR's information or from where the inquiries of KSR's, uh, the KSR institutes are coming from. Or only if I want to share that data to only single entity or a single person with, he has to focus on WhatsApp only. So we kind of have to govern that data. So what exactly governance is? Uh, if you compare it with simple term, uh, governance is nothing but a kind of government which improves or which focuses on our security, which acts uh, as a security for us, who is giving security for us. So it is similar like uh, the government here, data governance, kind of governance we have to make sure that the, the data is only available to only specific set of people who have access or who can make sure that data is secure. So the data governance part is a part of business intelligence itself. Now, if I compare it with our real-time examples, the self-service BI is a kind of different. So what exactly self-service uh, BI is, um, if, you, uh, if, if we want to take it with the real-time example, um, we kind of visit many hotels, uh, maybe any breakfast hotel or any tiffin-related hotel. So at that places, uh, many of the hotels have self-services. So what exactly self-services? We have to make sure that we get the token. Uh, we give that token to specific people only there only. And we get our tiffins or we get our whatever order we have placed. So exactly that is the scenario here in self-service BI. Everything we know, <clears throat> we have to make sure that whatever we know, we have to place that in that specific order so as to get the final product. So cell service BI is a kind of artificial intelligence here. It makes uh, use of artificial intelligence and it helps to improve the performance. Now what exactly artificial intelligence, how does cell service BI uh, uh, a kind of useful product we will see in future, but to simplify it, it's a kind of self service where it automatically self serves the information and gets the data at the end. Now, the last thing is data warehouse modernization. Now, what exactly modernization is? So we kind of using uh, any old technologies. We have to upgrade it. We have to upgrade it. So at that place, the modernization comes into picture. If we are using any uh, a kind of old technologies or legacy technologies, we have to upgrade it. Uh, the best example is if you take example of any ETL tool, Nowadays, many people are moving to cloud rather than on-prem ETL tools or legacy ETL tools, which are all on-prem. On-prem in the sense, we have to install that tool in our local machines and then connect it to the online server. So rather than using this concept, nowadays people are moving to the online applications or cloud-based ETL tools. So it's a kind of upgrade. Uh, earlier, we used to do it in our on-premise um, ETL tools. Everything was same. But in cloud-based ETL tools, what we are doing is we kind of uh, logging it from the portal. We are not installing it in our machines and we are using or we are kind of processing the data in the same way which we used to do in the legacy systems. So similarly, for any data warehouse, if we are using any legacy systems, we have to overcome that. So with this data warehouse modernization, we use the concept of latest technologies. So if you combine all these entities, which is nothing but business intelligence. So business intelligence includes data warehousing, data discovery, master data management, data integration, self-service BI, data governance, and data warehouse modernization. So it's a combination of all these aspects. It, at the end, the business intelligence combines business analytics, 
data mining, data visualization, and the data tools and infrastructure for the best practices to help organizations make more data-driven decisions. So this is how the importance of business intelligence is. Now, if I move ahead, now what exactly the Power BI is? Uh, you people might have a question that we are uh, going through Power BI. Why exactly Power BI? Why not any other tool? We will see that. But to start with, what exactly Power BI is? We know that it's a business intelligence tool. It's a business intelligence tool. So with the help of Power BI, we can analyze data. We can clean data. Prior to analyzing, we can clean the data. We can visualize the data or else we can share the data with multiple people. We can share the data with multiple people. We also have a concept called as security, where if you want to hide data with specific set of people, we can also do that with the help of Power BI. So whatever features we have seen here, the complete business intelligence suit, all these features are available in the Power BI. It's a kind of business intelligence tool and all these features are available in Power BI. Now, if I move ahead, if I want to compare it, what all BI tools are available in this market? Now we are only focusing on Power BI, but apart from Power BI, we have multiple BI tools available in the market. And if you go through the tools available, we have Tableau, uh, which is one of the main competitor for Power BI. We have Click, uh, we have Click View and Click Sense. They are, these are the sub uh, elements of Click. So with this, uh, Click is also one of the pri primary competitor for Power BI and Tableau as well. And we have many other tools, kind of uh, SAP, we have Pentaho, we have MicroStrategy, we have Domo, we have we have Looker from Google. So these are all business intelligence tools available in market. So now the thing is, why only Power BI? We could have used any other tool. We may have used Tableau, we may have used ClickView, but nowadays everyone or most of the folks are moving towards Power BI. Now, what is the reason? why people are moving towards Power BI. So we'll see one of the top five reasons why should everyone go for Power BI. Now, starting with, if you go through this magic quadrant, uh, you people have seen this magic quadrant, many uh, are kinds, a kind of, we have uh, gone through demo also, we have seen uh, uh, or a kind of have, in the demo also, I've shared this information, what exactly this Gartner quadrant is. So tips, so simplify it, to simplify it further, Gartner is a company which only focuses on comparing two aspects which only focuses on comparing two different entities. Now, what exactly this comparing means? Um, you guys have seen many videos on the YouTube or any social media platform, maybe on Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts also, that um, um, there are some technical channels also where people take two different phones and they try to compare it. They try to compare what features uh, phone A has and what features phone B has. And uh, they kind of do some research on it. Uh, they kind of try to use that phones um, for gaming purpose or for any other uh, a kind of uh, camera use. What is the use of that camera? How does the pictures look like? So they kind of give some information by comparing two different products, which product is useful, which product has better features. So you guys have might have seen many such videos. Even people use some phones they try to pour some uh, um, Coca-Cola or they try to pour some uh, liquid on that. What is the uh, water level resistance for each of the phone? Uh, you guys might have seen many iPhone products also where they dip that iPhone in the water levels, a particular water level, and what is the uh, water level resistance of each of the phone? So there are many comparison videos available in the social media. So this is how the Gartner works. Exactly, the Gartner works that way. They try to compare multiple products. Now you guys have seen this uh, business intelligence only, but if you go and see the Gartner website, they don't only focus on business intelligence platform. They also focus on other aspects also, other technical aspects. Now they have a quadrant, uh, if you compare it with our normal software engineering languages, such as Java, 
C Sharp and ASP.NET or Python. So they also have that chart, which programming language is leading. And why is it leading? They try to analyze the data. They try to gather that data and they try, they try to kind of compare the information there. So similar, uh, they are doing it for Magic Quadrant for business intelligence platform. So they have been doing it since long. But if you check the Gartner's Magic Quadrant, the Microsoft is the leader here. The Microsoft is the leader here. But I want you people to analyze or I want you people to answer. How do you compare these aspects? How do you compare these aspects? Um, what do you get from this uh, four different quadrants? Any information if you want to share? How do you share it? Anyone? I break it down. This is how it looks like. So uh, whenever this Power BI was started or whenever this Power BI was taking the market more from around 2017 or 2018 is when Power BI um, have lead, a, a kind of leader for this market. So at that time, uh, companies used to ask, they used to give us this quadrant and they used to ask what you can analyze or what information you are trying to get this from a complete quadrant. So if I try to make it, if I try to break it down, so this is how it should look like a kind of given uh, two different lines. So whatever uh, information or whatever business intelligence tools are there, they're all between these two different lines. Uh, and let's assume that this is the start line and this is the end line. And if you compare it with any real-time race, uh, any Olympic race also, so there are multiple, uh, let's assume there are 20 different, 20 different BI tools of which all 20 different tools are available here, of which a kind of only two tools or three tools are leading this market. Now, uh, this is from the third quadrant, but let's assume that only two tools are leading this market. So why leading? Because if you compare it with 50% of race here, almost every other tool is, or almost every other um, competitor is below 50%. If you check MicroStrategy, if you check Google, if you check Amazon Web Services, all other competitors are below 50% and above 50%, we only have Salesforce or the Tableau, which is nothing but product of Salesforce. Now Tableau has merged with Salesforce. For that reason, it is Salesforce Tableau. And the other is Microsoft, which is nothing but Microsoft Power BI. So half of the people or half of the competitors are below 50% and two of the competitors are above 50%. Now, if you go through it, um, how do we answer? If we have got this quadrant and the interviewer has asked, um, can you help me or can you analyze this data? How can you answer this or why Microsoft is the leader? We have to make sure that it is divided in such way that we are kind of starting it there are multiple competitors to Microsoft as well as Tableau, but almost every competitor is below 50% or a kind of, uh, they are running, uh, I mean, they are in the part of this race, which is nothing but below 50% and half of the people or two, only two of them are leading it. One is Microsoft Power BI and the second is Tableau. Now, which a competitor or which one of the service provider is near to end race? Microsoft. And the gap between Microsoft and Tableau, there is a huge gap. It might look very small here, but it's a huge gap. So this is how we have to analyze the data. Leaders are Microsoft and Tableau. Challengers are, uh, I mean, next to leaders is challengers who can challenge these leaders. So kind of MicroStrategy, Google, Amazon Web Services, Domo are a kind of challengers. We also have a click, which is part of a leader, but it is still lagging behind Tableau and Tableau is still lagging behind Microsoft. So this is how we analyze the data. And one of the reason why Power BI and why Microsoft, because Gartner has analyzed that use of Microsoft and use of Power BI is 
very high nowadays and why high we will see that we will see in the um, other slides but if i try to analyze this uh, this is for january 2023 this is for january 2023 and this is how the power bi was working now if i try to go back and see if i try to go back and see how was the microsoft power bi in 2015 Power BI was introduced in on 24th of July. Power BI was introduced on 24th of July, 2015. So a kind of eight years back, Power BI was introduced in 2015, 24th of July, 2015, Power BI was introduced. So this is as of February, 2015, prior to launch of Power BI, there was a kind of beta version. There was a kind of beta version. So how that beta version used to have or how that beta version used to compete with the multiple people. So this chart would give you better understanding. We'll try to analyze how importance of Power BI is and how is it evolved in last eight years. So 24th of July, you can assume it as a birthday for Power BI. Now, if you see here, Microsoft is one among multiple leaders and Tableau is the leader here. So nothing was or none of the competitor was nearby Tableau in February 2015. So this is for 2015 Gartner analysis. Microsoft was one among multiple people. Uh, it's a kind of, you could say there were multiple competitors and Microsoft was clubbed in between multiple competitors. Uh, it the, the Power BI wasn't released yet in February 2015. It's a kind of beta version available. So Gartner with that beta version, they tried to analyze, they tried to compare it with all other tools in the market. With that, they have already placed Microsoft in the on the very first year or prior to release in the leader's quadrant itself and this quadrant it, itself. But it was lagging behind click. It was lagging behind Tableau also. Somewhere near to micro strategy, somewhere near to micro strategy. Micro strategy was also one of the market leader from 2000s to 2010 or 2011. From 2010 to 2015 or 16, uh, kind of 16 and 17, Tableau was the market leader and after which Microsoft Power BI was the leading market in Power BI or business intelligence aspect. Now, if I move ahead to 2016, now you, you can see a kind of difference. There is a slight difference. There were multiple competitors. There were multiple people who were a part of this leader quadrant in 2015. Whereas in 2016, all others moved down. No challengers, they were only visionaries, they were only niche players, but in leaders, only three remained. Only three business intelligence tool or only three business intelligence competitors were a part of leaders quadrant. One was Tableau, one was Click, and one was Microsoft. Now, if you see the difference also from 2015, Tableau was way more ahead. There was a huge gap between Tableau and click and even Tableau and Microsoft. If I move it to 2016, the gap has reduced. There isn't much gap. Microsoft and click are almost competing and even click and Tableau are almost competing. There is a very low gap. So in one year, these tools have evolved a lot. There was a lot of development within eight to 10 months. Power BI had many features. So for that reason, it has overtaken all other tools and all other tools went down towards visionaries. So in 10 months uh, from July 2015 to February, the Power BI evolved a lot. If I move ahead to 2017, now the gap has also increased from ClickView to Microsoft, that is Power BI, and from ClickView to Tableau. The gap is increased and even Microsoft Power BI, it's a kind of competing with Tableau directly. Even though it hasn't overtaken it, there is a very small gap. There is a very small gap, kind of very minute gap here. 
And if I move it ahead to 2018, February 2018, still Tableau was the leader, but the gap has reduced again. So kind of Microsoft is directly competing with Tableau one on one. And starting from 2019, the gap has increased. Microsoft is the leader. Tableau have moved down to second place. So this is how the Power BI has evolved. Starting from 2015, even though it was a beta version, it was directly placed in the leader's quadrant. It was leading uh, with the help of features it had. It has been directly placed in leader's quadrant rather than being placed in challengers or any niche player or any visionaries. It was directly placed in leader quadrant it was directly competing with its real-time competitors tableau and click and with starting of january 2019 the microsoft is the leader in bi tools market it's a kind of overtaken tableau overtaken click view passed in 2000 if i go back yeah in 2017 itself it has overtaken click so in 2019, this was the gap. If I move ahead to 2020, now the gap has again increased. So for every year, Gartner publishes this quadrant. They try to analyze or they try to differentiate between these two products. So they use their some technical skills. They might go through each of the software. Uh, how do they compare? We will try to see that one of the reasons uh, or one of the primary um, reasons or one of the primary competitors, uh, Tableau and Microsoft. How do the Gartner compare between these two products? We are going to see that. But going forward in 2021 also, the gap is increasing. And we are now in 2023. Uh, this was last year in 2022 January. If I go back, if you compare, Pair hit year, there is only one change. In 2021 February, it was pure Tableau. It was an independent software or independent product. If I move it to 2022, Tableau, Salesforce Tableau. Now, if I go back 2020, Tableau was a different product and Salesforce was a different product. So how do they combine together? Salesforce had a different BI tool. They kind of overtaken or they kind of merged it with Tableau. So Tableau is now a product of Salesforce because Tableau software has been purchased by Salesforce. So it's a merged entity. So whatever Salesforce had earlier in the BI domain, they have merged it completely with the Tableau. And in 2020 or 2022, Tableau is fully owned product of Salesforce. So this is where the difference came in. In 20, Salesforce had a different BI product, which was competing or which was a kind of visionary here. And Tableau was directly competing with Microsoft Power BI. In 2022, Salesforce has overtaken Tableau. So they have merged all their products with Tableau. Now, how do Gartner analyze it or how do we have to analyze why Microsoft uh, Power BI is better than Tableau? We are going to see few differences. But prior going to that, we kind of gone through Google Trends also. Now what exactly Google Trends is? So Google Trends is nothing but it's a kind of trend market. It is trying to analyze which term or which product is trending nowadays as compared to other product. So we kind of have to give which product you are trying to search and it's direct competitor. So we kind of try to analyze Power BI versus Tableau. Tableau is in red color here and Power BI is in blue color. Starting from 2019, now if you check here, earlier from 2015, Tableau was searched more. But starting from 2019, February or around March, the Power BI is a kind of uh, overtaking Tableau or nothing but if, they, if you see the market share here, they are kind of same. Tableau was also same and Power BI also same, but around 2021 and kind of 2021 here, Power BI is leading here. Now the blue color trend is leading. And if I go back and check for 2023 also, somewhere here would be the Power BI and here would be Tableau. So the difference is increased. Why? Because 
people are trying to search more power bi rather than tableau nowadays with importance of power bi with the market share is it it is capturing so the trend for power bi has increased if you compare it with tableau so oh, you guys can go ahead and try to search the google trends also you guys can also see that why and which term is leading now and power bi if you compare it with directly tableau it would be leading in the market share or it would be leading why people people are trying to search power bi nowadays now let's see the basic comparison between tableau and power bi so one of them had a question i guess manjula had a question i have a question what is the difference between power bi and tableau so that question he would be answering I mean i would be answering here you would get your answers now why tableau and power bi what is the basic difference between them so tableau has around 24 default charts now what exactly default charts are if you go to power bi towards right we may see a pane here a kind of visualization pane and we have multiple kpis or multiple kind of charts available here so these all all charts are nothing but default charts these all charts are nothing but default charts it's a kind of visualization pane so similar visualization pane would be available in tableau it has around 24 default charts whereas power bi has around 30 plus default charts now why 30 plus because nowadays even default charts earlier there were around 28 or 29 but it has reached around 33 the default kpis or default charts available or default visuals available in power bi has reached around 33 uh, the latest introduction is multi level kpi card now what exactly multi level kpi card is uh, we will see it in power bi but nowadays every default chart is also increasing after every 6 months the count of default visuals are also increasing in power bi after every 6 months whereas starting from 2017 or 18 by default there were only 24 different visuals available in the tableau and if we want to add any additional visuals in power bi apart from this 30 visuals we have to go back to power bi service we have that option we have this three dots available here next to visualization pane or below visualization pane once you click on this three charts more visuals option would be available and if you click on more visuals it would try to go back and search from the power bi service so we have around 250 plus different charts available in the marketplace so that whatever you are trying to search it tries to search from the marketplace or power bi service that is nothing but a marketplace so in power bi if you want any additional visuals apart from this 33 visuals which we have we have around 250 plus visuals available from the marketplace whereas if you compare it with tableau we have to write a lengthy code to get more charts we have to write a code here a kind of coding is required to get more charts and in power bi it is purely no code to get any visual representation we don't have to write any code and now moving ahead to the third basic difference tableau has 77 different data sources available from which we can connect the data and if you compare it with power bi we have around 100 plus data sources now why 99 plus uh, with introduction of multiple services in azure it has reached around 110 different data sources so in power bi you can connect it with more than 100 different data sources whereas in tableau we have around 77 to 80 different sources now what exactly data sources means data source is nothing but from which from where you are trying to get that the data from where you are trying to get the data which you would be doing it for reporting so we kind of get data from cloud we kind of get get data from any local systems or any apis so there are multiple factors so with power bi you can get data from 100 plus sources whereas in tableau it's around 80 different data sources 
Now, the fourth and the most important point on which the Power BI is a kind of leader here is Power BI has an inbuilt ETL tool. It has an inbuilt ETL tool, which is nothing but Power Query. So Power Query is a kind of sub module available in Power BI desktop. With the help of Power Query, you can use it for ETL purpose. It can extract, it can transform, whatever transformations you want to do, it can transform that data. And again, you can load it within the Power BI. So Power Query, it is nothing but a powerful inbuilt ETL tool available with Microsoft Power BI desktop. Whereas in Tableau, we don't have any ETL tool. In Tableau, we don't have any ETL tool. And if you compare it with functions, Tableau has around 200 different functions. Uh, it was 180 plus, but now uh, with the latest introduction of few functions, it has around 200 different functions available. Whereas if you compare it with Power BI, we have around 318 different functions available in Power BI. Now what exactly functions are? If you go back uh, for a similar or a kind of easy representation, sum is nothing but a function available in Power BI. Sum X is also a function available in Power BI. Wherever you write tax queries, in that you try to write these functions. Sum is nothing but an aggregate function. Sum X is a iterative function. So there are multiple functions available in both Tableau as well as Power BI, but the count or the number of functions available in Tableau are around 200 functions. Whereas in Power BI, we have 318 different functions available as of date. So this is also one of the key factor why Power BI is leading directly with Tableau. And if you compare it with storage, Tableau has unlimited storage. It, it is one of the point where the Tableau is leading as compared to Power BI, but Power BI is nothing bad. Uh, 100 TB is more than enough. We don't have data more. I mean, if you're trying to visualize or if you're trying to give a report, maximum a report would assume around 1 GB or till 2 to 3 GB. That would be the size of data set. That would be the size of that complete report. If you compare, if you try to merge multiple reports also, more than 100 or around 100 TB of information can be given with the help of Power BI. That is more than enough. Yeah, Tableau is leading because there isn't any storage specific uh, limitation, unlimited storage, but even 100 TB is more than enough for any reporting purpose. And at the end, the deciding factor, Tableau costs around 70 USD, 70 US dollar per user per month. Now, if I compare it with Indian rupee, dollar is around 80 or more than 80, but let's assume the dollar rate comparison to rupee is 80. So seven, seven, the seven, eight, the 56. So around 5,600 per user per month and 10 USD, 10 into 80. It is nothing but 800. 800 per user per month. So the last and the most important or deciding factor here is the cost effectiveness, the cost effectiveness. So Tableau costs around 5,600, Power BI costs around 800. So this is the deciding factor why people are moving towards Power BI rather than Tableau. W, we have to write a code for additional visuals. We, in Power BI, there are around 300 different visuals available from marketplace. No coding is required. Number of data source connections, Power BI has around 110 different data sources. Power BI has an inbuilt ETL tool, which is nothing but Power Query. There are around 318 different functions 
available in Power BI. And in Tableau, we have around 200 different functions. And the last important factor is costing. Power BI is way more cheaper. Now, what exactly 10 USD is? It's a kind of, uh, there are different licenses available. Now, what that licenses are, we would be seeing it in future. But to give you a simple idea, Power BI Pro is the minimum license or Power BI Pro is the license where lowest amount is required. So for one Pro license per user per month, that is one Pro per user per month, he has to spend 10 USD, which is nothing but 800 Indian rupees. And for Tableau per user per month, the minimum license is the lowest license is 70 US dollar, which is around 5,600. So 5,600 minus 800 is 4,800. So you can, I mean, we are kind of saving 4,800 Indian rupees with the lowest license available in both the products. Uh, what is the time limit for both the means? How many months? Okay. So there are multiple questions. Uh, I'll try to answer it at the end of the session. But the key deciding factors, which we were trying to analyze, if I go back, why we were using, or what are the top five reasons? Why should we go for Power BI? We kind of gone through recognized by Gartner. We have gone through each and every trend starting from 2015 till 2023, the latest year. How Power BI has evolved, how Power BI has evolved with the Gartner's importance. The volume of data can be stored in Power BI or the search volume. We kind of seen the Google trends. Nowadays, the search volume for Power BI is uh, or you could say the if you compare it with the next competitor, which is the Tableau, the search volume for Power BI is more as compared to Tableau. We have gone through features, what all features we have in Power BI. We have gone through costing. One of the cheapest tools available in the market. Power BI is one of the most cheapest tool available in the market. And at the end, history and brand. Now, what is history? Now, what is history? We have seen this example. We have seen this example. This is the latest quadrant uh, for 2023. But when was Power BI introduced? In 2015. So within the introduction or prior to introduction, when was it a beta version? When it was a beta version, even then it was directly placed in the leader quadrant. Why? Because it was developed by Microsoft and it had a capability that it can directly compete with the available BI tools. So if you compare it, if you collaborate it with this history and brand, it was introduced in 2015 and in the very first year, it was directly placed in the leader quadrant was directly placed in the leader quadrant. And what is brand? It is nothing but Microsoft. Microsoft itself is a brand here. So whichever product has been developed by Microsoft, it's a kind of a leading product. We assume it as a leading product. So um, you may compare it with all other Microsoft products available. Uh, Microsoft Windows, one of the leading operating system for our desktops and laptops. Microsoft, any other Microsoft tool, if you compare it with any, um, um, uh, you could say office suits or office tools, Microsoft Office is the leader there. There are multiple office tools available here in the market, but Microsoft Office is the leading tool. So in terms of technicalities, in terms of any real-time uh, examples you take in technical aspects, the tools developed or tools which are part of Microsoft are a kind of brand. So with that branding, Microsoft Power BI was introduced. Within the very first year, it was directly placed in the leader quadrant. So we have gone through all five reasons why we are using Power BI, why not any BI tool? 
if i move ahead we will go through the basic history of power bi introduced in july 24 2015 so you, you may assume july 24 as the birth date for power bi on every july 24th or whatever i mean every year on july 24th there are multiple groups who are celebrating this power bi the birth day of power bi they kind of give us a complete history few uh, you guys have uh, you guys might be using linkedin or you guys might be using uh, youtube also if you scroll it back for we are around 16th of august if you scroll it back around one month also on july 24 there were many seminars on july 24 there were many podcasts uh, being uh, played uh, on power bi itself so the most searched word in July 24, 2023 was Power BI. So that is how the impact of Power BI is nowadays. It's a Microsoft product. So these are popular companies using Power BI, Adobe, Dell, HP. So these are all product-based companies. Adobe has multiple products. Dell is a product-based company. HP is a product-based company. Honeywell is also a product-based company. Even Edwards is also a product-based company. So many product-based as well as service-based companies are using this Power BI nowadays. They are trying to migrate their old reports. There are many companies who had reports in MicroStrategy who had reports in ClickView and ClickSense. And with uh, from starting from 2022, people were using Tableau. Tableau was direct competitor, but nowadays companies are also moving their reports from Tableau to Power BI. Now, let's see how Power BI works. Um, so exactly what exactly Power BI has, Power BI has two different components. One is Power BI Desktop, one is Power BI Service. Now, what exactly Power BI Desktop is? It is nothing but an offline tool. If you download Power BI, um, I'll show you how to download also. But prior to that, let's understand or let's uh, go through how exactly Power BI works. Power BI Desktop is an offline tool. Once you download it from store or once you download it from web browser, it's a kind of offline tool. So whatever designing, whatever reporting you are trying to do, you have to do it completely on on-premise or local systems, which is nothing but Power BI Desktop. It is not required to connect it online. While doing Microsoft Power BI, while using Microsoft Power BI Desktop, it is not required to connect it with the online service. You can directly use desktop, you can create, you can completely develop a report. Once you develop a report, if you want to share that report, if you want to share that report, you can share it in the PBIX format or offline format also, but that format is not recommended because it is a kind of development format. Now, if you compare it with simple technical terms, whenever a development is completed, you try to push that development to testing and then at the end to production. So at the end, while it is completely pushed to production, the end user comes there and tries to search that or tries to view that product. So similar is the Power BI. Whenever you're trying to complete any development or whenever you're trying to complete any reporting, if you want to share it with the end user, you have to use Power BI service. Now, what exactly Power BI service is? It's a kind of website developed by Power BI where you can share your reports, where you can share your reports. And these reports can be shared with multiple people. These reports can be shared with multiple people and multiple sub sub peoples also you can give uh, their aliases you can give their email ids and that people can directly come and share or that people can directly come and view your whatever reports you have developed so power bi desktop is the basic product or the most important product where you do all your reporting once that is done you have to share it to power bi service so that it can be viewed by multiple audience 
Now in Power BI Desktop, we might get data from multiple sources. We might get CSV or Excel format data, which is nothing but on-premise data. We might get data from multiple databases. We might get data from multiple cloud aspects. We might get data from multiple APIs. So there are many sources. As I've said, there are around 100 and 10 different sources available in Power BI Desktop from which you can directly pull in the data work. I mean, once you get that data, you have you can transform that data with the help of ETL or with the help of Power Query also. And you can use the Power BI Desktop to perform a reporting. Once reporting is done, then you can share it with the Power BI service. So this is how the basic architecture of Power BI is get data, load the data, create reports, and then publish that reports to the Power BI service to share it with or to view, uh, which can be viewed by multiple people, which can be viewed for, multi which can be viewed by multiple users. So now we have multiple components, sub components, you could say available in Power BI desktop. So one of the sub component is Power Query. It is nothing but an ETL tool, inbuilt ETL tool available in Power BI. The second one is Power View. Now what exactly Power View is, um, maybe starting tomorrow, uh, once you guys would be downloading Power BI, what exactly Power Query is, what exactly Power View is, I would give you with the uh, example of uh, Power BI desktop. But to uh, give you a certain understanding, Power View is nothing but where you create your visuals wherever if you are trying to get that visual and paste it in the white space. So that is nothing but power view. It's a kind of view available wherever you are trying to do your reports and KPIs. Power pivot um, in power view itself, power pivot is available. Now what power pivot is, uh, if you have data in horizontal format, you can change it to vertical format. And if you have data in vertical format, you can change it into horizontal format. So this is how the power pivot works, a kind of uh, standing to sleeping format, sleeping to standing format. Now how power pivot works, uh, whenever we are going to see the use of power pivot, I would give you a brief idea there. But the difference is, if the data is in standing format or in the columnar format, you can change it to the row format also. So this is how the power pivot works. Now, what exactly Power Map is? We have few KPIs available in Power BI or few visuals available in Power BI. They are a kind of map visuals. They are a kind of uh, map representations. So that map representations are called as Power Map. So that map representations are Power Map. Uh, we have a component called as Power BI q and Now, what exactly q and is? It's a kind of AI available in Power BI. Uh, nowadays, many people are trying to search what exactly Copilot is, um, what exactly Microsoft Fabric is. And in Fabric, we have a concept called as Copilot. Copilot is nothing but a AI tool or AI chatbot available in the Microsoft entities. Now, prior to Copilot, Power BI already had a AI tool, which is nothing but Q and A. Um, to simplify it, I would give you example starting tomorrow, but Power Q&A is a kind of AI tool available in the Power BI desktop. And these all components combine together to form a Microsoft Power BI desktop. It's a combination of Power Query, Power View, Power Pivot, Power Map, Power Q&A. If you combine these five different sub topics or five different sub entities together to form a Power BI desktop. Now Power BI website is nothing but where you share your reports. So the Power BI service is the Power BI website. We also have Power BI mobile apps. We can use mobile app. You can download it from the Google Play Store uh, if you go to Google Play Store, enter Power BI, Microsoft Power BI would be available in the Play Store also. You can directly go and 
try to download that Power BI. In mobile also, you can use it for development, but use of touchscreen is kind of difficult. You can use your mobile to publish the reports. That would work. But if you're trying to develop any report, it is a kind of difficult using mobile application because we have to drag and drop everything. But if you're trying to download it in the desktop, you are trying to use it from the desktop or laptop, uh, Power BI would be way more easier for reporting or development purpose, the Power BI desktop. So these are many, uh, these are kind of sub components. We have five different sub components, Power Query, Power View, Power Pivot, Power Map, Power Q&A, which are nothing but a part of Power BI desktop. We have Power BI website for publishing reports and Power BI mobile apps. You can view the data, whatever you have published. Uh, from the mobile app also. Now, I'll go to the questions so that I can answer them. Uh, Jagdish had a question, please clarify when possible. So maximum 100 TB can be imported to Power Query in Power BI. Okay. Uh, Jagdish, to answer this, um, there are different licenses available. So for Power BI Pro, if I go back for Power BI Pro, maximum you can take 10 GB of data. Uh, this 10 USD is for Power BI Pro, less, Pro license. And for this Power BI Pro, maximum 10 GB of data can be extracted. Now, how this 10 GB is extracted? Maximum data set size is 1 GB. So 1 GB, 10 files can be extracted differently with this pro license, which costs around 10 USD. So that is how the pro license would work. Whereas if you compare it with Power BI Premium, Premium is way more costlier. It would cost around 4,995 US dollars per user per month. So it's way more costlier. In that case, you can take 100 TB of data together. You can take 100 TB of data together. Whereas in Tableau, uh, we have seen Tableau 70 USD per user per month. It would also take one GB of data set. It would also take one GB of data set. So this is how the difference is. In Pro, we can take maximum 10 GB, but for 10 GB also, every data set, we have to take one GB as a limit. So one GB into 10 files would be 10 GB. That is the maximum limit for Pro license in Power BI. Whereas if you want 100 TB of storage, we can take or we can use a Power BI premium license. So in premium also, we have two different licenses, premium per user and premium per capacity. Wow. Now, what is the basic difference that we would be seeing further, but I won't confuse it now. This is how, I mean, this is, I mean, this is what you were expecting. So I've tried to answer it. Maximum 100 TB can be taken in premium license. Uh, Jagdish had a question again. So can the Tableau reports migrated to Power BI? Are there any specific adding fields? Uh, we can migrate reports from one BI tool to another BI tool. But if you load that previously built BI, I mean, previously built Tableau report and it would be directly converted into Power BI, no, it won't take place. If you compare any other BI tools also, Migrating means we are kind of developing the same report in the latest format in the different BI tool. Now, if you want to migrate it from Tableau to Power BI, whatever report is developed in Tableau, you have to again redevelop in Power BI. So it's a time consuming process. Now, why they are migrating from Tableau to Power BI, why they are investing more money here is because Tableau is a, a kind of costlier product. If you compare, I mean, if the reports are migrated once to Power BI, it would be kind of very uh, cost effective. And even many updates are available in Power BI on monthly basis. Whereas in case of Tableau, every quarterly basis updates are available. So every three months we get an update in Tableau, whereas in Power BI, we get update on monthly basis. Uh, we only use data set. No, 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 no. In Power BI, we can, I mean, if you are trying to migrate from Tableau to Power BI, we have to develop each and every report independently as if it's a new report. 
what is the time limit for both means how many months or years we can store the data okay so manjula had a question that where how many years or months we can store the data unless you delete that report unless you are deleting power bi report from power bi service that report would be available so if you are trying to save that report for next 10 years also that report would be available so there is no time limit Whenever you want, you can delete that report. Whenever you want, you can upload that report. So there is no time limit. Okay, so we kind of have 20 minutes. Uh, I'm open for questions. So please raise your hand so that I can take up your questions and I can answer them separately. Uh, just a moment. But prior to going that, um, I would help you how to download Power BI. We kind of will take a look. So one who has a Windows system directly go to Microsoft Store. So whoever are using Windows 10 or Windows 11 directly go to Microsoft Store, enter Power BI. Once you enter Power BI here, please download this Power BI Power BI desktop. Don't download this Power BI. This is different. This is for um, a kind of service, powerbi.com service, but please download this Power BI desktop. Wherever it is mentioned as desktop, try to download this. So I already have it. Why um, I already have it in my PC. That is why I'm able to only see open. But one who doesn't have, you get it. You get an option like install here. Just like install. Please install this Power BI desktop. Um, people who are using Windows 8, so then that people can go back, search Power BI desktop. Once you search it. Go to this official website. Once you go to this website, click on English and directly download the Power BI desktop. So the simple uh, process is directly go to uh, store. If you are not, if you don't use store, directly go to any website or any browser. Click Power BI desktop download. Go to the official website. You get this, select whatever language you want. It's in English by default and click on download. So very simple power bi desktop is very simple to download now one disadvantage is people who are using mac uh, you may not be able to download power bi desktop because this software is not suitable or this software is not available on mac um, so you have to make sure that you have some other operating system or with the help of any external vdis or virtual machines you have to make sure that Mac is connected to Windows Virtual. 